Good morning and still morning at NTV. Welcome uh, this to this segment. This is Elvis Senono. Today, as Romeo stated, we are going to be discussing the state of affairs in Ugandan football. And like Romeo also stated, we have several guests lined up. And I'm um, going to start this segment. I'm going to start with uh, Mujib Kasude, a director at Poline Football Club, but also a person who holds several, um, uh, who, ca who, who you can describe as um, a person who's very, very resourceful in Ugandan football. Um, uh, well, uh, he wears very, very many hats. Um, you can describe him as a former uh, footballer, uh, played at uh, the very highest level in Ugandan football, played with the Cranes, the national senior men's football team, and uh, went into administration. Um, uh, he's currently a coach's instructor, and uh, there is no better person uh, to discuss the state of affairs in Ugandan football like Mujib Kasule, a person I've uh, known for just over two decades, uh, he might not have known that uh, he might not have known about my existence, but I've certainly known him for quite a while. Mujib Kasule, welcome to Morning at NTV. Thank you. Mm. Good morning. Well, um, uh, several things have been happening, and uh, I'm sure uh, you are one of the few Ugandans uh, who understand football on and off the pitch. But I would like to first of all pick your mind about um, um, the state of Ugandan football at the moment, most especially. And the retirement of the Cranes players. Uh, yesterday we had Mike Azira, um, the latest player, latest player to come in and announce his retirement from the Cranes. Um, um, Dennis Onyango, the captain, uh, did so at the start of the week, as well as um, Hassan Waswa. These are players who've been around for the last decade or so. What do you make of uh, the current situation, especially with the national senior men's team, the Cranes? Um, our game is in... Uh, in a state of disrepute. Mm. Uh, it's in chaos. Uh, our national team that unites all Ugandans, mm. uh, that bubble has finally burst. For a long time we have been glued to the national team. Mm. We've been hanging on to the national team as the only source of joy mm. uh, in the game. Mm. Uh, but if you see the things that are ongoing, not only with the retirement of the players, but right from the field, the way the team has been playing, the way the team has been managed. Um, people are being dismissed. People are f having fights within the camp. The coach is being put aside on suspension. Um, players are suspended. Uh, players now complaining about payments and the way they are, they are, they are, they are treated. And eventually, the team now disintegrating in a manner that not, is not befitting mm. of these legends of the game. When mm. you see Onyango being forced out of the game, mm. of course, he will say, I am retiring. They are trying to be professional, mm. but we know there are underlying issues behind there. Mm. So our game has lost values. Mm. Uh, it has lost respect for the public, uh, uh, for each other, mm. and we are, we are in a state of dilemma. Mm. Let, uh, let me take you back a bit. I think this whole situation cannot be detached from uh, that f now failed AFCON campaign, qualification campaign. What would you put down the crane's failure to qualify uh, for a third straight Africa Cup of Nations? Is it a blip or there could be fundamental issues that uh, led the cranes not qualifying? They are fundamental, fundamental issues. Mm. They are fundamental issues. You see, the cranes is being run like a business. Mm. Uh, they, had, they have people that have been doing the job for them. Mm. You see, we get this set of players. They are experienced. Mm. They are passionate. Uh, and they can do the job. Mm. We go out there, put all monies that we have mm. into this so that we can generate money. That is the model we have had. Now, they came to us, the public, and they said, AFCON, 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 qualification. Mm. So they made us believe, they made people believe that mm. football starts and ends with cranes. Mm. Government has invested a lot of money in football, 10 billion. That's a lot of money if you compare. Every year. Every year, 10 mm. billion. If you compare to the rest of the sports disciplines, mm. this is so huge. Mm. Actually, football takes 10 of the 17 billion. Exactly. That is exactly. Mm. That's how much government has been convinced. Mm. But all that 10 billion mm. strictly goes to cranes. That's the condition. Uh, then, 
FUFA has, Cranes has six multinational companies that are sponsored in Cranes. Mm. Uh, talk about Nile, talk about Airtel, uh, Bidico, mm. Nick Insurance, uh, Bait Lion, mm. Ecobank. Mm. All these are multinational companies and they're putting money in Cranes. But Cranes has never been satisfied with the resources that we put in. Mm. So it has been run like a business. When you run football like a business, mm. then you are bound to, to reach heights that we are here. But, Mujib, to cut you short, isn't football a business? Yes, it is. Mm. Yes, it is. But it's football is unique. Mm. It is a business, mm. but you must run the football. Then the football generates the business. Mm. If you put a business together mm. to make money from football, mm. it is bound to fail. Mm. So when you do it like that, mm. you are going to ignore all the other structures underneath the cranes, as we call it. Mm. If you do that, you are going to neglect the principles of football development. Mm. You, will, you will not be developing players. Mm. You will not be channeling players through. You will not have a system. Because for you, you are looking at somebody who you think mm. can get you qualification. Mm. You are not looking at the future. Remember when FUFA came out in 2016, they mm. said we have a project called 2019. Mm. Project 2019, Cameroon 2019. Exactly. Mm. So that's how short-sighted they were. Mm. And indeed, they were right. Their, their, their program was until 2019. Mm. So that's why from 2019, mm. things have been going down the road. Because they, they was, we were uh, short-sighted. Mm. Uh, the, 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 the model was based on cranes and making money. Mm. And not cranes making money for the game, mm. in my view. Cranes making money for certain people. Mm. But, but Mujib, you can also, w <coughs> in that period when they talked about um, Cameroon no project 2019 in Cameroon and um, the cranes actually went on to qualify for the 2017 edition and then the subsequent one in 2019 isn't that progress for a country that had uh, taken 40 years close to 40 years that is close to four decades without quali qualifying for Africa's uh, showpiece tournament no it was it was a great achievement mm. because Ugandans wanted it mm. so as long as fans want something we should work to give it to them because fans come to football for different reasons. They want to be entertained. They want bragging rights. You know, they want to, to, to showcase their patriotism. They want their country to be at the best. So as far as that is concerned, we achieved it. And, and, and we should give credit to the people in charge, uh, in charge mm. for having done that. Uh, but remember, what people forget, that that was also a process that started in 2005 under Dr. Lawrence. He came, he's the, actually the one who came and said, now, we are going to go to AFCON, and I'm going to make sure that under my administration, we go to AFCON. Mm -hmm. Now, people believed, people became thirsty for that, mm -hmm. and they started to build. Before then, the Cranes brand was really, really terrible. You mm -hmm. couldn't mention Cranes anywhere. Mm -hmm. Then there was a deliberate plan to build these Cranes, mm -hmm. improved player welfare, the branding, and everything. They got the right uh, partners to promote, and Cranes became a brand. Mm -hmm. And our status in terms of the game quickly started to, 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 grow. to, write, to grow. We were not qualifying, but we were getting closer and closer and closer. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time his administration got finished, we were now being seeded. Mm -hmm. When he came on, we were going through the preliminaries. And that is the trick when it comes to qualification. Mm -hmm. So when this administration came, mm -hmm. they did what Ugandans wanted. Mm -hmm. they, they, they put us beyond the finish line. Mm -hmm. So we give them credit. However, mm -hmm. in that process, because we neglected the other structures and concentrated on cranes, mm -hmm. the league is in a terrible affair. Mm -hmm. uh, underneath structures, youth structures, we mm -hmm. don't have them. Mm -hmm. Maybe, Mujib, um, to come in shortly, you can talk about what you do. You've described what is a top-to-bottom approach yes. uh, that uh, the current administration seems to have embraced. Mm -hmm. But the people in charge might also point out that this is actually the most successful period um, for Ugandan football, especially with the youth teams. Uh, you can talk about the Sekafa success, the under 15s, uh, the under 17s, mm. and the under 20, and um, girls' football as well. Uganda also holds the Sekafa title. So when someone says we have the Sekafa title under 17, under 20, uh, there is involvement. There is not just involvement, but the country is actually winning these tournaments. And you can also point out the team that uh, many Ugandans have followed. 
over the over, have known about over the past three to four months that is the national under 20 football team the hippos isn't that success with uh, the youth structures isn't that pointing at something deliberate that has been done by the current administration um when you look at it on the surface mm. you you see it as success mm. it also um depends on what you call success mm. so if there is a tournament mm. of the under 17s mm. and two weeks to that tournament mm. you invite players and they go they play that tournament mm. and they win that tournament mm. and they come back mm. no activity whatsoever until the next tournament but, but they actually have a league there's been a league yes i am coming i am coming to the league mm. uh, but you see if you if that's what you call success mm. then it makes it makes sense Secondly, if we as Uganda want to continue to measure ourselves mm. on the way we perform in Sekafa, mm -hmm. then we are setting our bar so low. Mm. Every football administration mm. since I was young mm. has won these same, the same titles. But the country has not been even taking part. You know, you've been very, very involved um, uh, in youth football. We've already taken part in the Sekafa tournaments. Uh, we have, yes, but at least we've not had a league. In yes, I am coming to the league, mm -hmm. but um, I'm trying to say... Mm. Uh, youth football mm. is continuous, is consistent, and is mass participation. Youth football is continuous, it is uh, consistent, and it is mass participation. There's mm. no two ways around it. Mm. Now, what for us, what are we doing? Let me go to the under-17 junior league mm. that has been sold to us. Mm. Now, youth football is mass participation. When you talk about youth football, the mm. first thing you talk about as a federation, the people who are running the game, mm is mass participation of the kids under that age category. Mm. So you must spread it from the first corner of the country to the last corner, such that every kid in every corner of the country mm. has an opportunity to participate. If mm. they have a dream, you must set the, the, the ground level for them. So that is the first aim what FUFA should be doing. Mm. So my question to you would be, are they doing that? You realize no. The junior league mm. that people are talking about, first of all, it's not a FIFA program. That is a FIFA program. You know when it was being introduced. Mm. They said FIFA is bringing this program. FIFA is going to pay for ABCD and all that. But many of the countries in the region, and in many, especially in the region, the cover region, are not, have not taken it up, have not embraced yes, it. Yes, but Elvis, if we want to continue to measure ourselves mm. to South Sudan, <laughs> because we are talking about the region. Mm. So everything... Uh, and some countries actually in Africa. In yes, Africa. Mm. yes, I understand. Mm. But I am talking about the principle of youth football is mass particip part participation because mm. the kids who want to become the next Onyangos, mm. they can't take themselves through the development process. They depend on us mm. to think for them, to put the ground level for them and to put processes for them. Now, that junior league you are talking about only is gives opportunity to 400 kids only. Why? Because it was tied on the Uganda Premier League. So if a team has, if we have a Premier League team, they were asked to have this team to play. Mm. Now, when you get on Ginger Road, I'm giving an example. Mm. In Ginger, we have two Premier League teams. Mm. After Ginger, all the way to the border. Mm. There is no Uganda Premier League team. That means... Well, they can point at MIDA, my Malaba Youth Development Yes, but MIDA has been around for a few months. Mm. That is exactly my point. Mm. And MIDA does not have that youth team you are talking about. Mm. So from, from, from Ginger all the way to the border, there is no youth football whatsoever. Why? Because there is no Premier League club. You cannot put youth football uh, as a condition for only Premier League club. When you get to Masaka Road, from here all the way to Mbarara, mm. there is no youth football because there is no Premier League club. Mm. When you go to uh, the Hoima Road, mm. Chitara has been around for a few months, but f for all the time the Junior League has been around, mm. there is absolutely no football from here up to there. And then the, the, the Junior League is only under 17. What about under 15s? What about the under 13s? Mm. What about the under 11s? Mm. You see, mm. we are not playing football at the district, we are not playing football at the region, and we are starting from the top. Mm. So. Out of the 4 million youth under that age category, you have only given 400 mm. 
an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Of course, from the 400, you will get talented players, you'll even promote them, they'll even do everything, but you have not done what is required of you to give every kid an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And as long as we are narrowing it, and remember, all these Premier League clubs are centrally located, most of them. So you have centralized football, and the people that are far out there, mm -hmm. you have not given them an opportunity. The kids in Kanamoja, mm -hmm. they, they don't have an opportunity mm -hmm. to play football, mm -hmm. but they have every right to play. I'm looking at it as um, some progress has been made. Yes. And um, I think we should credit uh, the progress that has been made. I agree. Um, then going forward, what do you think the federation or the people in charge of football in the country need to improve uh, for us to have... Um, uh, for example, more involvement with um, uh, with the youth. We, we, when you mentioned the figures, about four million and all, what needs to be done to correct the current setup or to improve the current setup? Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Mm. Um, like I said, when it came to the national team, mm. we should give credit to FUFA for having given Ugandans that dream because it was a dream for us all Ugandans. So we got the dream, and you have the. So with the youth system, currently we have an idea. Mm -hmm. Currently we have showcased that if these youth mm -hmm. participate and given an opportunity, they can, so, can, they can do wonders. Mm -hmm. Look at the under 17 girls team, mm -hmm. the way they were progressing mm -hmm. uh, until the pandemic hit. Yeah, we went into we in the final qualification round to go to the World, to Cup. To the World Cup. You yeah. see, and that is, that is progress on the side of the girls mm -hmm. and it gives you an indication. Actually, from that team, for me, I made an opinion, a footballing opinion, mm -hmm. that the girls are more likely to get to the World Cup before the boys. Because, right. because their game is still in development stages. You saw, we, so we can take advantage of that, that not so many countries have embraced the game. Mm -hmm. Not so many countries are taking the game seriously. There are just a few. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the continent, there are about six countries that are really very strong. So we can get into the mix mm -hmm. if we, we, can, we can do things the right way. Mm -hmm. So I am saying now we have the idea mm -hmm. and we have a structure that is very, very small. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do mm -hmm. is exactly uh, what I have said. Let us take the game mm. to the grassroots. Then, Mujib, you are one of the people who've been um, involved um, in youth football. Mm. And uh, you have um, an organization that I've described as uh, the, the closest semblance to mm. a, a football academy mm. in the country. What do you, what do you think, what do you, why do you think we have so many, of, for example, of these academies coming up? also called academies coming up, or youth setups and all. But why is it that still we fail to get, for example, players who play the right way or have the right approach? What do you think these academies are not doing right? Because they are on their own. Mm. First of all, we have so many academies, but they don't play football. What do they do? They, they, they train, but they don't play football. Because academies now in Uganda, there are so many, they start at age six. Mm. For us, we even start at four. But there is no football competition for all those ages until 17. That's why I was saying we have a problem. We don't have any football organized, whether at the district, whether at the region level, or at the national level. Mm. For the under 11s, under 9s, under 13s, under 15s, we start at under 17. And at under 17, Messi was the world star. So at 17 years, players are supposed to have completed their la learning process. For us, that's the first time they get an opportunity. That's why uh, people didn't know Alpha in ProLine. Mm. Because his first competition that was organized by FUFA was at under 17, but he joined ProLine at 17. And at, at 17? He joined at 3. At three. Oh. So the first time people heard of him was at 17. So why? Because all those years, he never had a FUFA organized uh, uh, competition or tournament or league. Mm. And that's where we're losing the players. When people are training and no, they are not competing, then they are not, go they are not growing, they are not developing. Mm. So that's where the problem with academies are. Mm. We have not organized them, we have not organized football for them, mm. we have not given them coaches. Mm. You know, the people who are passionate about the game, they start the academies and they start coaching because they love the game, but they are not guided. We don't have enough coaches to go around because we have not produced enough coaches to go around. So academies will not teach these boys how to play. And what has happened? The schools have taken over. Because the schools are playing, so they, the kids go to school and there are some school competitions, also not under FUFA. But you know with the schools, 
the person who talks about football in the staff room becomes the games master and the games master becomes the coach mm. but he is not trained as a coach mm. so yes the school is playing and it is winning but the boys are not being taught so from there the clubs now come and mm. pick them mm. now when they pick them these boys are not taught so the clubs put them in their system and later these boys even graduate they go to afcon they go to chan and they don't play the right way mm. then we blame the players but we have not put the structures, we have not put the processes. Because with kids, with football, when it comes to youth and those who want to dream to play, we are supposed to do three things for them. We are supposed to nurture them, we are supposed to develop them, and we are supposed to expose them. So we are not doing any of those three deliberately. So the boys that you see that come out, they come out as we came out by, by accident. We see him in Masaza, you see, and then we say, this is a wonderful player. Then we bring him on, and three months later, that boy from Basaza, three months later, he's in, at the highest level on the continent. So if we don't put the processes, the structures, the systems, then we cannot produce any product. Mm, but Mujib, you are, you are a coach's instructor, right? Yes. Do you think you're teaching these coaches the right way, or you're giving them the appropriate information that they should be passing on to the, the young boys or the players that are, that are active? Yes, we are. Mm. Yes, we are. But our coaching education just started eight years ago. That's when Uganda started the program of uh, coaching the players, educating the players. The mm. program started eight years ago in 2012. Mm. So we are still young in that process. Isn't eight years a long time? Is no, eight years ago for an education program. Mm. Imagine you go to the, the other side of education, the normal education. For example, if the Uganda mm. education system started eight years ago, what would you be asking of anybody who has come through that? Mm. So that we, people started in the 60s. People started in 1900. So for us, we are too late mm. into that process. So coaches now are just going through that process. And because they are talented in that area, they are picking up. And we see the results a bit changing, especially at the top. But we have not produced. We don't even have 1,000 qualified coaches yet. You see? So yet we need over 10,000 coaches that can go around. Mm. So we have not concentrated on the things that we, we are supposed to concentrate on to target the growth of this game from the ground all the way to the top. And that's where we need to now start to think about, rather than thinking about cranes, cranes, cranes as the beginning and the end of the game. Interesting conversation that we are having with Mujib Kasule, a person who holds several, um, who has a huge profile in Ugandan football, an administrator, a director of the ProLine Football Club, a coaches instructor, and a person who has played the game at uh, the very, up to the very highest level in Ugandan football. And we are discussing the state of affairs in the country at the moment. We have players retiring. We have the nation failing to qualify for the Africa Cup of Nations tournament. And um, we have an upcoming election in uh, the world of Ugandan football. And we're going to be discussing that and much more when we return. Still morning at NTV. Keep it here. He talks about his career as well as uh, being straight with the Federation. And uh, following that interview, there was that leaked audio um, uh, that came out. And uh, he had a couple of things to say about um, uh, the way players are treated and uh, eventually um, um, what has been happening, I think, behind the scenes that many of us might not have known. But like we said earlier, we are joined by the Uganda Sports Press Association president, that is Patrick Kanyomozi. Patrick, good morning and thank you for honoring our invite at Morning at NTV. <laughs> good morning, Elvis. Uh, good morning, the viewers. Mm. Uh, good to be here and uh, good to be here to discuss matters with uh, Mujib here, uh, f probably from future FUFA president. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Patrick and his introductions are um, always, uh, always catchy. But Patrick, I would like to start with you. Um, um, you've, you've had um, uh, the interview with Denis Onyango. He talks about quite a number of things, but I'd like to pick your mind especially about um, um, Onyango's retirement. First of all, what do you make of uh, his career, the career that he's had with the Queen's team? Well, to start with the career, it's, it's been a brilliant career that he has had. There's no doubt about that. I think he's achieved uh, almost everything that there is to achieve mm. for a footballer. And if, uh, if there was ever going to be a Hall of Fame for Ugandan footballers, I think it would be one of the first names in that Hall of Fame. Mm. 
and he's done well for the national team. If you remember the times when he was struggling to get playing time at his club when he had just moved to South Africa, mm. he still produced uh, stellar performances for the national team. Mm. So there is no doubt that he has achieved what was there to be achieved, mm. and he's been uh, a professional, mm. one that every player looked up to. You talk to the Uganda <coughs> Prince players, the current ones and the retired ones, and um, almost everyone talks about Dennis Onyang and the kind of impact that he has on the team, both on and off the pitch. So, I mean, it, it's been a remarkable achievement for him. Uh, the side of the retirement, uh, one, I want to start with, uh, with saying that as, as a country, mm. I think we need to embrace retirement more. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit unfortunate that we live in a society mm -hmm. where retirement is something that is almost unheard of. Uh, two things that are rare commodities in this country, retirement and resignation. And in the sports world? Uh, not only the sports world, but across the board. Mm. Um, I mean, you look at public offices and how people are hanging on to them. So for retirement mm. might be a new phenomenon for mm. most people, mm. uh, but it's something that we need to embrace. Retirement and resignation. Mm. And the resignation I'm talking about is not resignation, mm. uh, maybe if you've gotten a better job or you're not comfortable with the working conditions, but mm. resignation if you've done something wrong and you say let me resign from the post so those are two areas <coughs> that we need to embrace we also need to appreciate the fact that uh, players retire mm. from the national team they do especially when you reach a certain age players make a decision and maybe say let me reduce on the international engagements and mm. concentrate on a club <coughs> football it's been happening however the concern should be the the environment the existing environment mm. the current environment mm. um uh, the, and that maybe to cut you that's where mm, exactly mm, i was heading to mm, mm. um you have three Ukrainian players now we've seen that this that is um the the letter written by Denis Onyango and his representatives mm. announcing his retirement we saw one written by Mike Azira yesterday mm. and as well as the communication from Hassan Waswa that came in um, uh, at the start of the week what is it a coincidence mm. what would you put it down to we've not had first of all it's, like you said it's a bit of a new phenomenon mm. um, our players just disappear mm. then now all of a sudden we have players who are announcing their retirement from the Ukraine uh, team. Mm. Is it a coincidence? Mm. Is it because uh, there was a message sent out by the FUFA president over the past few weeks? Mm. Um, is it just because the Ukraine have failed to qualify? What would you put it down to? We're talking Hassan Waswa, we're talking Mike Azir, we're talking Denis Onyango. Uh, well, I don't, I don't think it's a coincidence. Um, uh, uh, it has something to do with what's going on. Because mm. if these players, uh, um, I understand Dennis Onyango made the decision after the Malawi game, mm. but was asked to, to hold on to the announcement. Mm. Probably it was the same with, my, with Mike Azira. Mm. But again, if they had decided to hold on to the announcement, then uh, why bring it out now, mm. uh, especially immediately mm. after those reckless statements uh, that were made by the FUFA president? Mm. That was the biggest show of disrespect respect to any footballer and for me much as like I started by saying that we need to appreciate that there is need for retirement at, at a certain point players need to go but the timing for me has everything to do with what was said mm -hmm. and for me um, what I read from this it's a it's a sign of, uh, of displeasure with what was said mm -hmm. and the few that can take um, that can't take it for the rest of the others mm. are the first to do it. I wouldn't be surprised if two or three more uh, took the same route and resigned. So much as it's okay for players to retire at a certain age, mm. this coming at this time, um, it has uh, something to do with what was said because, I mean, no player, no footballer was happy or will be happy with what was said about them. Munjib, do you agree with uh, Patrick's uh, view that uh, it's no coincidence that uh, we have uh, these players retiring at the same, almost the same time? Is it something they've thought about, and uh, is it in relation to the current situation? No, I think um, they've done it in, in, in protest. Mm. Uh, because when the president came out and rubbished them. Oh, the FUFA president? Yes, mm. when he came out and rubbished them. You don't do that to the players, especially with what we have been discussing, how they brought us the glory of qualification, and how they've been gallanty servants of the, of the team. Mm. Uh, you don't do that in, 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 in public, mm -hmm. and everybody knows it. Uh, in football, the coach can, can say such things to the players, and they do. Mm -hmm. Remember the, 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 the way Ferguson treated his players, mm -hmm. but we could only hear of them. Those things happen in the dressing room. Even the coach can do it, but only in the dressing room, because sometimes players need that kind of uh, wake up call, but the only person who can do it and they accept it is the coach and even with the coach inside the dressing room. Now, no club owner can go and rubbish his own players 
in a press conference like that and those players stay. So when he did that, maybe he didn't know, but when he did that, players felt hurt. So hard because prior to, to Dennis's uh, resignation, he voiced his feelings in that audio. Mm. If you know him, you know it's him 100%. So he voiced his feelings, and at the time he was talking to a fellow player. In his, he seemed like he would consider continuing until after the World Cup qualifiers. qualifiers. Mm. But when that happened, you know, these players talk. They say, you know, enough is enough. If we keep quiet now, we will not have achieved anything. Let's put our voice and let us make an action that will show them that we are not happy with what they did. And that's how it has happened. Like Patrick was saying, if you don't have values in the game, mm. we don't have traditions and we don't have norms, mm. the game will become useless to everybody, the fans, the players, and, and people who follow mm. it. Because now, Onyango has been forced out, but with all his CV, mm. why wouldn't Onyao, Onyango retire? at his own time and with a befitting send-off. Mm. You see, mm. what, no matter what happens, this, the way he has retired will live long in his memory and for the, so many of his fans, his family must be hurt because they want to come out in, in a special way. And I think at the right time, mm. that can be arranged for these boys. Yeah, b uh, but from that message, uh, I thought there are some reckless st statements, um, all things said by the FUFA president, Moses Magogo. But apart from that, in his whole... Um, address, didn't he hint at a few things that you think uh, maybe the players needed m also to maybe step up? For example, when you look at that um, qualification campaign, failed qualifi qualification campaign, um, some of the football played wasn't really good. Uh, some of the performances were not good, especially in the final three games, three to four games. When do these players own up also to the, the, bad, the bad performances? It's two ways. When the players go out on the pitch and we don't see effort, mm. we don't see endeavor, mm. then you can, you, can, you can call them out. Mm. That's the only time. If the game plan fails, if the substitutions don't work, mm. if you call people and you did not assess them and you find out in the 30th minute of the game that he was injured, then that you cannot fault the player for that. So, if the players go out and you don't see an endeavor, for instance, the boys that were Chan, when you go and look at the statistics, they covered the most distance in the entire tournament. They were in the top of those who covered the most distance. So that shows you that these boys huffed and puffed, but they didn't have the right tools to play the game. And who gives the tools? It's the education system that is supposed to be uh, put in place by the, 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 the Federation. Mm. So you cannot fault them. You cannot call them. You cannot say they played that. Mm. And then for you you, 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 you put the players on one side, and for you, you plug yourself out of the situation. Yet the problem is not the players. Mm. So mm. when players don't give effort mm. when you put on the national team, because the national team is pride. Mm. The national team, you are pre you're representing the rest of us. Mm. It is patriotism mm. on the show. And that's what people demand of you. That's why you see many teams go out and play and they even lose, but because they've given their heart out, people mm. appreciate. So when they don't do that, we blame them. Mm. But this campaign, the way it went on, they invited players that were injured. You see, a player, if you say, you call a player before assessing him, you don't even know when he's playing or not. We have seen they've been inviting players to play for the national team when they have not had a club for eight months. Mm. That's why I told you it was a business that for them, people, they believe that they can do the job, mm. they stuck with them. But they didn't look after them very well. They didn't help them. Mm. In, in Europe, coach will call a player and say, if you're not playing, I cannot call you. So they are helping the player to see and also find playing time. Mm. So I don't think that you can fault the players at Chan mm. for, for, for playing the way they played. Mm. But uh, players and the national team, when it, came, when it came to this AFCON, I think there was general complacence. After the two qualifications, people thought it was all good. Mm. It was okay. Mm. Players were hurt mm. going into the last games. The allowances were not paid, and that's the time you need to motivate them. Mm. But because everybody thought, ah, I heard that they, they were promised about what fifteen thousand dollars, 
Patrick, you want to come? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, the other thing I wanted to chip in on what Mujibu was saying. Um, it wouldn't be wrong for a FUFA president to have his say about the performance of the national team. Mm -hmm. But where, da where does he mm -hmm. make those statements from? Mm -hmm. For example, if uh, Engineer Magogo had called a technical meeting yes. and voiced these particular concerns, mm -hmm. he has every right to go to a technical meeting mm -hmm. and use the word he used mm -hmm. uh, in the technical meeting mm -hmm. uh, with the coaches and the players there. But it's different when you go on a national media and you make well, such when you invite the media uh, when mm. you invite the media and make such statements mm. I, I mean if I, I don't know if I may use for example if uh, the head of NTV uh, went to the press and started making statements about uh, the kind of work that staff of NTV do uh, for me I mean he can say that in the staff meeting mm. but you cannot go to the media and say that but also it's an admission of failure on mm. the side of the FUFA president because who puts these technical teams in place mm. he plays the oversight role so he, that means he's answerable for everything that is done. Um, before these players uh, tendered in their retirement or resignation letters, I expected that to come from the FUFA president because of that admission of failure on his part to make sure that he puts in place the right teams to get the best out of the players mm. that the country has. Mm. Okay, um, then apart from that, there is uh, an interesting view um, uh, from on social media, mm. um, uh, someone questioning the way I think the FUFA handle for Twitter uh, handle is used. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mujib, um, I want to pick your mind about these players retiring and all. Um, um, was it the right time for them to, to go? Do, or do, did the country need them? Were they, do you think they were still useful and they could have added something, especially on, t on the pitch? Yes, I think they could have been useful. Mm. Especially if well, you have is, is it a time to make the move, to, to make the transition? Since 2016, mm. Uh, that was the right time to start making the transition. Mm. But you make the transition within the team. If you want uh, Onyango to retire, mm. Onyango's replacement should begin to see some games a year before Onyango leaves. You know, you must plan it. Mm. Uh, Onyango must have a say in who's going to replace him. The coaches and the federation must know it must be a deliberate. So in some of these games now, you begin to introduce him a bit as you withdraw Onyango. That's the best way you can replenish the team. That's the best way that you can have players retire. Mm -hmm. Kanu, remember for Nigeria, stayed around and he was not playing for a long time, but they stay around to make sure that the youngsters that are coming through, mm -hmm. they can learn from these people. Mm -hmm. We don't have that kind of uh, a system within the Uganda Cranes technical side mm -hmm. where players can, can retire, but we are able to replace them. We don't have a system where we can know that if Wadada is the right back, in the under 20, who's the right back? In the under-17, who's the right back? And in the league, who's someone that is close to, to taking over? Such that we know, and people who are following football, they will know these things. Mm -hmm. But we don't have, because now, when you see Wadada, uh, in the under-20, if you look there, there's no right back. Genuine right back. Because the person who played in right back, in the under-20, mm -hmm. he's a center back Garden for his club different. and everything. So there is no plan. So players, yes, should retire. But it must be planned. Mm. Uh, and then we know he's going to repair, retire. And we know the, the game, mm. his last game. We should know it. There's absolutely mm. nothing wrong with that. Mm. Uh, yeah, and for me, I think, I think the, the, because <coughs> when you look at uh, the period between now and the next game, the mm. qualifiers, it's, it, it's barely two months. Mm. Uh, so I think that's a very short time to handle a transition on the national team. Um, I believe these players could have played at least the qualifiers. Yes. Um, I mean, uh, because the qualifiers are in June, mm -hmm. uh, they could have, they should have played the qualifiers and then start managing the transition from there. Yes. Since we were not able to start it earlier, it should have started earlier, like Jiba was saying. Mm -hmm. But now that we missed that opportunity, I thought that it could have started after the uh, qualifiers, which, which are just in two months. Mm -hmm. And you know, obviously, what happened before that statement that has been captured on 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 TV. Mm -hmm. He had made a statement about the senior team and he himself said, there are players who have been in the team for five years mm. and they have been doing nothing. Mm. You see, mm. now, if you know it and if you knew it why, would it, why would you let that happen? It means that there is no technical plan when it comes to the team. Yeah. And now, this is not even a transition. This is now a crane's crisis. Mm. That because the transition is... This one handing over from this one. But these ones have just left the, the, the door mm. and left the house. Mm. Now, 
all of a sudden we are going to look around who's there, who's here. You know, others are being called now, don't do it, don't do that. So we are now in a crisis because the way we have managed the affairs, I don't think w w was right. Okay, um, Patrick, um, we've, had, oh, we've also had a situation over the last couple of weeks, started on social media by uh, Mike Mutiawa or Sulaiman, um, a player, a person who's been around football for quite some time as well, uh, recently retired. Um, his last club was KCCA, but also played for the national team up to the senior level, senior men's um, national team, the Cranes. And uh, he's raised a couple of um, issues, especially regarding accountability and all. Do you hold the view that uh, he is being used um, uh, to fight the current administration or he has some valid reasons that he's put, trying to put across? Well, it's two way. W one, um, given the political situation uh, uh, right now in mm. politics, there's a there's you a have an upcoming there's, uh, yeah there's an upcoming election in what four months, mm. um, so there's a possibility that uh, someone could be behind it. Mm. But even before you get to the point of who could be using it, I think the most important thing would be to look into the issues that he is raising. Mm. Is there any validity in the issues that he's raising? And I think there is. Um, I just saw. I think was it last night? Uh, confirmation that the that the players he has been talking about mm -hmm. have been paid which mm -hmm. means that the issues that he's been raising mm -hmm. are legitimate mm -hmm. and valid mm -hmm. so for me uh, th that now uh, where that there is someone behind him doesn't matter at this point mm -hmm. if the issues that he's raising are valid um, I mean, that should be what should be looked into. Uh, but like I said, uh, given the political situation, uh, you can't rule that out. But for me, my, my, my concern in the Mike Mutiaba situation is mm. trying to politicize it. Now, politicize it on the other side. Mm. Because, um, because I, I understand that there, there were issues in processing his bond application from, from old Kampala police station mm. because uh, someone played the other political card. Mm -hmm. um, I understand the call came in from uh, a powerful force saying that that boy is a, is a noob mobilizer. They are trying to burn Fufa House. Now that that gets uh, that gets messy if it gets to that point. Mm. And it will bring me to the other point, um, a mild point, which probably I will discuss at a later time, where I believe the Fufa president mm. should not be in mainstream politics because of the many the many issues that can arise from it. Mm. But uh, Mutiaba, the issues that he's raising, it's good that some of them are being looked into. And uh, he, he speaks for the players, uh, whom most, mo most of them obviously uh, say these things. Elvis, you and I know that mm. some of these things might not get out to the media. There are so many stories that stay in the newsroom. Mm. But these players do speak. Mm. And we know who, who has issues with what, who has issues with fans, who hasn't been cleared since when. And uh, they should be looked into instead of looking into the personality of the person raising these issues. Mm. Then, Mujib, uh, we, have, we had a scenario where Mike Mutiaba was beaten mm. in the parking yard of Fufa House. Your windscreen was smashed uh, about four years ago. A uh, journalist has been beaten from the same area. And you want to stand for election again. Aren't you worried? Won't you be beaten? Jiva <laughs> might need a bullet. <laughs> last, 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 you have a bullet <laughs> last time I made a mistake, I thought this was a, fufo, a football house. This mm. is my house. <laughs> so I, I went alone. We've uh, had former Queen International, there was that group. Uh, yes, I made a mistake and last time and um, I went alone because I'm thinking this is FUFA house. Mm. Even the way I picked my forms, I was actually inside FUFA teaching coaches. Oh. Yeah, then I took a break. I went and put, picked the, non the nomination forms. Mm. Now, from that time, I think I became an enemy. So when I came back to return the forms in my car, um, I, I didn't anticipate any... Any, any, any violence, any hostility, mm. but my car was hit hard. The, the big stone was aimed at at my head, but uh, it hit the wind of the car, the, the screen. However, um, in the last four years, football players accessing FUFA, not not only FUFA the the the, the buildings, but mm. FUFA the institution, mm. accessing uh, FUFA has been a very big problem. Mm. Uh, they feel the game is forcing them out. And when they try to, to, because for them, rightly so, they think the game is theirs. And this game belongs to the players and the fans who cheer them up. Uh, whenever they try to access it, uh, the way they speak to them. You see, those who played, mm. the, the Federation has always come out and say, you had your time, you misused your money, uh, therefore leave us, it's time for the new players. Now, that kind of talk, that kind of lack of, the, the values within an institution 
lead to people to be defiant, to be desperate, and when people are desperate, they try all means. So every time players want to go into FUFA, want to force themselves into FUFA, they are arrested and they are taken to Luzira. You know, mm. look at Mike Mutiaba incident, for instance. I don't know if you have a video. This boy goes with four young boys. They sit there having nothing, non-violent. They sit on the side and they just put up their placards. Mm. You see, mm. six of them, non-violent, uh, there is no chaos whatsoever. If I were the president of the federation, I will instruct my people to give them food and <laughs> take care of them while they are there. I would even come and talk to him. Mm. You see, but instead they were prepared for them because they had big sticks. They hit them on the head, they kicked them on the head, and they were even willing to shoot. Now, those four boys, and all of them are footballers. The others are much younger. They play in first division. Now, that is the impression. They were smart. They sat there. They didn't even try to break into, you know. Mm. Force themselves into they it. They didn't force themselves into it. Yeah. They wanted the boys to be hard. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they were voicing something. Now, for me, I've been asking, which one is easier? Explaining the issue of the, 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 the salaries and the bonuses to the players or beating them. Which one is easier? <laughs> you see? So, for me, it's because now FUFA has become a cult. And the people who are running it, they think they are untouchable. Mm. They think they don't need anybody. When, when you host them, the way they talk to the public, the way to the, they talk to the players, the way they do their things, they feel that this is their own thing. Mm. And all of us are just participants and we should behave the way they want us to behave. Mm. That's why you see Semogede has been arrested and sent to Rosida for, mo for weeks. Mm. Uh, Mike, to get him out. To get Mike out, people who are trying to do it went through hell. Yeah, okay. mm. At one time, he even got to bail and stepped outside. And you know when they, they are rescued again. <laughs> <came in. laughs> so this is where we are. But football should be all inclusive. Mm. People come to football to enjoy, to be happy. To you know, the, the only rivalry we have is between clubs, you know, and the fans for bragging rights and all this. That banter, mm. we enjoy it, and that's what makes us so passionate about it. But the environment in Uganda is extremely toxic that it doesn't allow for any of that. Mm. Either you're a player, fan, even mm. people who work in the media, mm. the club owners, mm. people are, are, are in captivity within the game. Mm. And mm. this is not the reason why people come into the game. Mm. Patrick. Yeah, but uh, I mean, uh, the, the challenge is now what's happening to, to Mike Mutiava? Sometimes um, what happens in the football community is just a reflection of what happens in the wider Ugandan community. It's, mm. it's, a, it's a problem that we have as a country. There is no room for peaceful protests, generally, in Uganda. It's, mm. it's, it's not only football. Peaceful mm. protests, peaceful demonstrations. Uh, so, I mean, what, what wrong had Mike Mutiaba done there? <laughs> you get a placard, go to the football house. Because mm. if you if you request or asking the FUFA president to resign, mm. you don't take your placard to City Hall. <laughs> mm. You have to take it where the FUFA president sits. Mm. And for, for a footballer, I think there should be some extra respect given to him mm. uh, for, for every mm. footballer. We all know the footballers are the biggest stakeholders mm. uh, in, in football. And for me, th that was very despicable. Mm. Uh, but what makes it worse is that up to now, no action has been taken uh, from the Federation. There's not been an apology. There's not been, at least publicly, any action taken against the security guards. Mm -hmm. For me, which is, which is uh, like indication that these were orders from the powers that be and uh, yes. the, the FUFA president and everyone at the FUFA house was part of it, which because is, which is wrong. The, poli the police looked at the video. And after looking at the video, they decide that it is Mutiaba that should be arrested. Yes. <laughs> For me, that's, that's what disturbs me, that after looking at the video, mm. and you see how the security guards are kicking him in the head and even willing to shoot him, mm. they decide that Mutiaba should be the one to be arrested mm. and probably end up in Chitalia. Mm. And the security guards are safe, they are back at work. No yeah, no, nothing was done no until nothing. the security guards yes. and mm. Mutiaba ended up in jail, um, uh, spent the night in jail and uh, like I was saying, even getting out was, <laughs> was a real problem mm. uh, because um, I mean, uh, a call came in from a powerful voice and they were asking them not to release him. It took the intervention of a very powerful person in the police force mm. who happens to be very close friends with Mike for him to get that bond, which mm. he's entitled to. Mm. But was this necessary? I don't think so. Uh, mm. What's the worst that could have happened if they had allowed him to gain access and seek audience with whoever was there maybe the CEO the deputy CEO or everyone there mm. so this impunity that, that uh, mm. 
that was exhibited mm -hmm. totally uncalled for for me. Okay, um, Mujib, you this week you declared your intention to stand uh, <coughs> for FUFA uh, presidency. What has changed from what happened four years ago? What do you think you're going to? Uh, why, what makes you confident that you're going to convince these delegates? Because uh, while I, I know you have support from my section of the public, and um, many people think you have the credentials and all, but what makes you think you, ca you can convince the, pub the, the delegates that you can, get, you can become the next FIFA president? What has changed is that uh, last time, uh, you know, last time people said I came out late. Mm. But you know, because we know how FUFA operates, not only here, but generally on the continent. Uh, once you declare intentions early, mm. they run and try to block you. They try to find ways mm. to, to block you. They will change the, the documents. They will change the constitution and everything to make sure they block you. So that time we thought that the trick was to uh, do it last minute when they have no time to do that. Mm. So I came out. I tried to first come out and then give my agenda, mm -hmm. but th that didn't happen. So this time, uh, I have come out first with my agenda. What do I intend to introduce to the, to, to, to the football in the country? Mm -hmm. And for me, that's what I want to sell first to the public. I know people say the, the, the public doesn't fall, but for me, the opinion of the public matters because in football, we serve the public. We serve the fans, we serve the players, uh, and we serve the other stakeholders, the, the, the sponsors, and everybody else. Football also serves government. So for me, that's what matters most. It's more important. If the public didn't want me, if they didn't believe I should even step near the presidency, mm. but people inside are telling me, come here in the hotel, we make sure you can become a president. I would never allow to be president. So for me, this is the first step, and I am glad that my agenda is receiving uh, positive uh, um, feedback, feedback mm -hmm. from the public. So this time, I want to sell this agenda to the delegates, mm. because all of us who are in football, we owe, we have a responsibility mm -hmm. to make sure that we treat football and people who love the game mm -hmm. by giving them what they want and what they want to see. Mm. So I want to sell my agenda. My focus is going to be on the, on the leagues, mm. on the clubs, uh, on the districts, at the regions, both for men and women, inclusiveness, you know, uh, players, uh, welfare, transition, and everything, such that we get football from the ground, mm. rather than this approach of making us believe that football starts and ends with cranes. It's a perception that even the fans had adopted for a long time. So we need to change that. We need to start thinking about parents now have kids and they, the kids are, are so desperate to play football. But parents don't know what to do because there is no any organization at the grassroots, at the, at, the, at the lower level. So we want to take the game to its natural origin, to generate happiness in stadia, to generate happiness in football meetings, to be in every circle. When we talk about football, football is at the center. Not to remove the ball and then we talk about football and then later we put the ball back. We want to put the ball at the center side that every decision we make is to help football. Mm. Football development is measured by the decisions football and football make. Mm. So if you make so many wrong decisions, you cannot claim to be developing. So for me, that's where I want the game to go. Mm. That's how we grew up seeing things. Mm. You know, when we were growing up, we never discussed personalities. Mm. We never had this. Mm. But now it is becoming worse. Mm. There is almost no difference between the main politics and the football politics. And for me, mm. that is the death trap of the game to completely disappear. And uh, as we wrap it up, Patrick, mm. what do you make of the whole electoral process um, uh, with, um, regard, in regard to the FUFA election and all? Mm. Uh, do you think uh, it provides a fair ground, uh, the criteria and uh, the requirements needed? What do you make of the whole process? Well, the, the whole process, the good thing is that uh, Mujib was, uh, was part of the formulation of, uh, the, 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 some of the, some of the new uh, the electoral laws, mm. um, which it's two ways. Some people look at it as locking out some people mm. because, I mean, to be, a FUFA, uh, to be a FUFA president, you must have served in one or a combination of, I think there are four different areas for mm. a period of seven years in the last 10 years, mm. uh, an executive member of CAF, as a CAF, 
AFA or FIFA, executive member of FUFA, mm. you must be <coughs> the, you, you must be a chairman of a member of FUFA. Mm. Uh, I think for a, a, a club, clubs are members of FUFA. Yeah, the uh, top two tires. The, yeah, the top two tires. Uh, so for, uh, it might be looked at as locking out some people, but on the other side, I want to look at it as if if you want to be part of football, then be part of it from the start. If you want to be a FUFA president, mm. you don't come out of nowhere uh, mm. two years and you want to be a FUFA president. So mm. I don't have major qualms about about the length of having served in those capacities. Because, mm. uh, uh, I mean, every job requires some experience. Mm. Uh, but the, the spirit with which they were introduced uh, is where I have uh, question marks about. Mm. And now it's, it's good that the people who are behind those uh, those uh, formulations are now going to be in the mix. Mm. Uh, Mujib and uh, Moses Magoga served in that administration when th these electoral laws were coming into play. Mm. Uh, the big, the the biggest challenge, uh, w which I, I which I think the people contesting against Moses Magogo have, mm. is uh, getting into the hearts of, of the the delegates. Mm. Um, we, we know how this this uh, whole process is is handled mm. uh, from the f the grassroots elections, the district elections. Mm. You have to make sure that you have people coming through the district elections of which I, I I don't think Mojib has been part of because they were over the weekend mm. so it's going to be a bit of challenge and we all know um, how the delegates can be swayed and this doesn't happen in one or two years it happens over a period of five years mm. the the trips with the national team the the allowances the suits um, the, the everything mm. you, you just have to be in a assembly to know uh, mm. how how close they are with the sitting president so it's going to be a, a big challenge but if, I mean if you want to be president then you have to have the guts to convince everyone in that electoral college to vote for you but it's not going to be easy mm. I think for for Mujib and Alan uh, if Alan makes it to the ballot mm. uh, that is mm. um, uh, but the process uh, tilted uh, mm. in, in in favor of the incumbent which happens almost everywhere and it's a big task on the people posing to get into that office well um, very interesting discussion that we've had in uh, regard to the state of affairs in Ugandan football, and I have been joined by Patrick Kanyomozi, the Uganda Sports Press Association president, as well as Mojib Kasule, a person, uh, a football person. I would describe him as such because uh, he holds so many titles, and I would take another five minutes, which I do not have, in trying to read out all the titles that he has in the footballing world. But thank you for joining us. It's been morning at NTV. I'm Elvis Senono. Keep it here at NTV.